Bob Workman, thank you for talking to me. You worked for Gay News in the 1970s. Can you tell us a bit about what Gay News was? Well, I think it was a community newspaper. Um, it wasn't actually owned by the community. It was started by two or three people, of whom the surviving member was uh, Dennis Lemon. And, uh, but it felt that it had a brief to uh, be fair to as many aspects of the gay and lesbian world that it, uh, it could be. You were the star photographer for Gay News. What were you doing before Gay News? Uh, I was a dropout architectural student. I'd dropped out because my two best friends were good at uh, acoustic music and I encouraged them to set up as a band, would you believe, and uh, go professional, which they did. And uh, we all, uh, I was their agent and manager, and we all survived for seven hippie years. And if you've ever seen um, the film With Nail and I, that's the sort of life uh, we led. And um, we're in my flat now, um, the same flat as it was then. It got more and more crowded, and uh, since one room was the rehearsal room for the band and another room was the recording studio, the only communal room was the hall, and um, it, which you'll see is a narrow uh, hall. And we used to put the TV down one end and stack chairs, one higher than the other, and watch TV as though we were kind of sliced through a cinema, but that was our only communal space. <coughs> How did you first hear about gay news? Um, I think the, the thing that I first... The, the path starts... Uh, I came out when I was... Uh, or told people that I was gay when I was 27, which is quite late, but nothing like as late as some people who I subsequently discovered. Um, and uh, I'd... Uh, Funnily enough, I have a gay uncle, and um, at the time, me and uh, my people from the Architectural Association were living in Earls Court Square, and he visited there once, and um, he'd said, because he was one of those people who sort of said risky things, he wasn't an out gay fellow, but he said, oh, you have to be careful living here, uh, there's the Colhern just round the corner, that's full of queers. And uh, I think I, he'd said that when I was about 18 or 19. So I knew of a gay place to go. And um, so 27, things were getting a bit rough. And uh, I uh, decided to tell my friends that I was gay. So I knew of a place to go, uh, which was the coal pan. And... Um, during visits to the Colburn, I must have seen gay news. I was also uh, taking up photography at that time. And I looked at the uh, title page of gay news and I discovered that it was in Star Road, which is just round the corner from here in my flat. And um, I decided, oh, I'd like to contribute to this. And um, I thought up two or three ideas for stories or articles, one of which was I went round London photographing um, street names and things that had double meanings, things like Dyke Road, um, Great Queen Street, uh, raised manhole cover, and uh, these sorts of things. And uh, I um, also wrote an article about coming out and being gay and I think I wrote, I, I've forgotten what the third article was, but I put these in an envelope and uh, put them through the letterbox of Gay News. And uh, within 24 hours, I'd had Dennis Lemon coming back to me uh, saying that they'd like to take all the articles. Um, and uh, so for about six months, I was commissioned on a freelance basis to photograph things. But I was also photographing for uh, Roger Baker, uh, was an editor for a glossy gay magazine, which I can't remember if it, it might have been called Gay Times or I've forgotten what it was called. But um, when Dennis Lemon 
saw... He was the editor, wasn't he? The editor he? of Gay News. Uh, when he saw that I was uh, publishing for something else, uh, he decided to offer me a full-time job. So... Uh, you mentioned the other the glossy magazine. So before Gay News, was there anything else for gay people to actually read that catered for them? Yes. Uh, I'm not a specialist in the history of uh, gay publications, but um, that Roger Baker or a chap called Peter Burton and various other people all contributed. I think there was a magazine called Jeffrey, and there would have been. Uh, but it wasn't in any way a rounded gay life that was being presented in these publications. What was the attitude of the media towards gay, well, gay issues before gay news came about in general? Well, uh, it could vary from uh, maybe The Guardian would do uh, a full rounded uh, report on whatever the gay issue was, but like it could be, uh, you know, very negative. But I, 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 it's not something I, I knew, I, you know, I, I, I'm not quite the historian on those matters, uh, as other people are. And what was the atmosphere like at Gay News to work there? I know Dennis Lemon was quite a formidable character. Yes, um, he was. I, th I think it was very friendly, I enjoyed it very much. Um, it was a benefit to me that I was out of the office a lot of the time um, because uh, during the day, uh, just on a boring technical thing, uh, one of the jobs that, the thing that occupied at least six hours of my day every day was, uh, this was uh, in the days when uh, the student or community publications were wax and paste uh, publications where um, typesetting was done on a chalky piece of paper, put through a waxed, a waxing machine, you'd then cut it up and stick it down on boards, and you had to um, put a dot screen on the photographs, but we didn't have the dot screen camera, uh, uh, but we used, time, first of all, timeouts dot screen camera, and then we used the international Marxist groups uh, dot screen camera and so my job every day was a great big pile of uh, historic books or new photographs or things. They were sized up by the art editor, expanded or uh, contracted and I would go over to the copy camera in the magazine headquarters of those two organisations and uh, we'd get the copies made and uh, come back and they'd be chopped up and stuck down on the cardboard sheets that made the, the paper. <coughs> but uh, then in the evenings I would be off photographing in discos or uh, pubs and social things for the campaign for homosexual equality or uh, theatre things or... So were you in involved in gay politics as well? Not separately, not mm. really. Um, no. What was the attitude of gay people in general to gay news? Uh, well, I think um, very friendly, I would say. Uh, it was my sort of cachet uh, coming along to a strange club in Leeds or Nor Norwich or somewhere. Uh, I was you know, very welcome and um, when I was there on business with my camera, um, there was usually, if it was, a, I was probably the first person to take photographs in gay discos and uh, the biggest, the, the sign of the times and the big new thing was a, a disco called Bang. So uh, one of my the features that I did was a sort of seen and heard or um, box pop type uh, article where I would go and get the names of people and photograph them and ask them a few questions. Uh, at Bang, um, on the Tannoy, I think he was called Gary London maybe, the disc jockey would announce, uh, we've got the photographer for Gay News here 
um, anybody who doesn't want to be on the photographs uh, go to the left hand side of the disco uh, and anybody on you know who does go on the right and so it was kind of announced that I was there um, and uh, it was always our policy that we asked people first mm -hmm. before we took photographs in indoor places if people were on a gay pride march I, I, I felt free to photograph them but the point of them being there was that they were out and proud and uh, showing themselves. You would have photographed probably quite a few celebrities in your time. Well, in your time at Gay News, any favourites? Well, my uh, favourite photo was of David Hockney. Um, it was a photo that was it wasn't in any way a particularly good photograph, but it was bought by the National Portrait Gallery, and I'm pretty sure the reason that it was bought is because I was photographing him in front of the painting that he was doing at the time, which was uh, his parents. So I, I'm pretty sure that uh, the National Portrait Gallery just wanted it's a thing that's important in time, there he is in front of his painting that he's actually doing of his parents. Um, were you at Gay News during the time of the two trials? There was one about two men kissing, I think, on the cover, and then there was the other trial, the Mary Whitehouse one, involving the poem. Do you remember your time there during that period? Yes, uh, I was there during the Mary Whitehouse trial, and uh, I would be there with my heavy camera outside the court. Um, these valuable books that I was taking over to the copy camera in bags by my side, having to cope with my camera and take pictures of Mary Whitehouse as she arrived or left, and a bit worried about losing, you know, some historic book and picture of Ivan Novello or um, some historic gay character. And what was the general atmosphere in the office and with Gay News when Gay News lost the trial? Um, I haven't. I, I don't really remember. Um, pro again, perhaps because I was on my own and out out of the office so often, I, uh, it would have had large financial consequences. But they they seemed we weren't party to them to that. And um, Gay News was in really quite robust health financially. And um, I think people felt confident that the community would support gay news, which it, it seemed to do. Um, so things seemed quite, quite not too bad. It was also, as, as these things are, uh, made gay news a famous worldwide name, really. I remember during the trial and after the trial, gay news was suddenly courted by a lot of the other media, like Private Eye, etc. Do you think, though, in some ways, the failure of the Mary Whitehouse trial led to the downfall of gay news? No. Um, what happened with gay news is that uh, Robert Palmer had gone on um, one of the very early business courses. Robert Palmer was? He was the managing editor of gay news. He was Dennis Lemon's second-hand man. And um, gay news by that point owned its own freehold, an escalating asset in uh, West Kensington and was extremely robust, large sums of money in the bank and uh, with a very strong future, absolutely no problems of any kind. But Dennis Lemon, who I think felt guilty about owning gay news, it was because he was the survivor of the original three or four people. Um, these things, when they're started off the street and in unrecorded uh, beginnings and unlegalized situations, I think people can feel, uh, you know, they're not quite sure. I don't think Dennis ever felt that he really owned gay news, but um, Dennis wanted to move on to greater things at one point. I seem to remember that he was he thought he was going to direct films or produce films going to Hollywood. Um, but rather than put this incredibly uh, absolutely no bills, huge you know large sums of money, good freehold 
uh, up for sale in an open market where I believe that uh, all the major publishers would have loved to have bought the thing and develop it. There would have been gay guides, gay cookery, gay... Uh, it would just have gone on forever and ever. Uh, he allowed Robert Palmer to talk him into uh, an internal buyout. Um, this was probably within the first year of the new law introduced by Maggie Thatcher where uh, internal business uh, buyouts were allowed. And I think the intention of that uh, law was so that either a group of directors or, and I think they meant the whole uh, staff of a place, could buy their own business and use the assets of the business as the purchasing uh, power for clinching the deal. But Robert Palmer uh, did this entirely on his own for himself. Um, he's supposed at a later point to have said that he didn't want to open this up to the whole staff of gay news because you couldn't, you know, what would we do about the lesbians? E.g., you know, would you trust radical political women uh, to knuckle down to uh, uh, commercial priorities and things? And um, uh, <clears throat> we, this, hap this happened, Dennis Lemon left the business, but as we got to learn the nature of the deal, um, we uh, became more and more truculent and uh, annoyed. Um, and we discovered that the deal was that the freehold was sold, that was £74,000, and then Dennis was to be paid £20,000 per annum for the next five years from the profits of Gay News. Gay News moved into rented accommodation, which was quite nice. It happened to be near a Fleet Street, uh, just beside the Guardian. Um, but we realised that the power was in the staff, in the hands of the staff, because uh, if the paper didn't make uh, enough profit from which the £20,000 was going to uh, be paid to Dennis Lemon, um, the deal was null and void. And so we kicked up a mess and uh, didn't cooperate, and the paper didn't make its profit, and uh, the, the payment to Dennis Lemon was uh, not forthcoming. So Dennis Lemon returned to ownership of Gay News and Robert Palmer left. Uh, and by, but Dennis was in no mental state of uh, being able to run Gay News at that point and uh, there were no, uh, we didn't own our own freehold, the staff was largely uh, uncooperative, Dennis Lemon couldn't sort out things on his own and the thing dwindled uh, and uh, stopped. So that's my version of the story. I think it's uh, slightly more accurate and uh, politically uh, uh, astute or uh, factually correct than even the book by, Den by Andrew Lumberston and uh, Gillian Hanscom. <coughs> Do you think if gay news hadn't collapsed and closed, it would have survived in today's market? Absolutely. Uh, exactly like Private Eye, which is extremely... Um, profitable and uh, completely unchanged and for all I can see is still done on the cut and paste method um, and the stage magazine is another uh, profitable uh, newspaper it owns a nice little freehold in Bermondsey um, things survive when things are wanted gay news will always be wanted uh, things will not be provided by the rest of the world that gay people wish to see and read. Uh, there are several free magazines, but they simply do not um, provide anything that I'm remotely interested in. And, uh, you know, no proper theatre reviews, book reviews, thought pieces about uh, the world and things like that. And could you see yourself working for Gay News? I would have happily worked for Gay News for the rest of my life. Um, 
I would have loved to have been. Uh, I'm uh, very keen on the cooperative movement. And uh, I think I spent about six or nine months exploring uh, cooperative ownership. I can't remember if that was, it must have been during that period uh, of Robert Palmer and before Dennis Lemon came back. Because I remember going to the Islington Cooperative Agency and asking for advice. And I just know that um, if the 20 people who were on the staff at Gay News had been uh, cooperative owners of Gay News, as indeed the legislation was in, uh, written to encourage, as far as I can see, we would have survived exactly like Peter Jones and John Lewis's. Uh, I'd like to say the co-op, except the co-op is in rather bad difficulties with its co-op bank, but uh, long live the co-op movement as far as I'm con concerned. People enjoy working uh, on a cooperative basis, they take pleasure in the jobs they do and they enjoy the rewards that they make uh, themselves. What have you done since Gay News? I've become freelance. Uh, during Gay News uh, I became interested in theatre photography Keith would send me out to uh, the press photo calls. That's for Keith House, the Keith features House, editor. The features editor, my boss. And um, I would report back to him um, that uh, there was a gay character in a play, and uh, Keith would then send along a reviewer to do it. There's two interesting stories uh, from that. One is that uh, I was photographing the press photo call for. Uh, I would say, what's the Shakespeare play with Achilles and Patroclus? I can't remember, but um, there were the characters, Achilles and Patroclus, who are lo Greek lovers. They were all done up in leather bands and things and had a big fight. And during this, Reg Wilson, who was the uh, photographer for the Daily Telegraph, put down his camera and said, the Daily Telegraph isn't going to publish this gay stuff there's no point in me taking photographs. So I went into overload, click, click, clicking. Um, another thing was that um, uh, there was a play called Coming Clean at the uh, Bush Theatre, written by Kevin Elliott. And for some reason, Keith trusted me to review it. Um, or we went along both together to photograph this play and um, we watched it and then we suddenly realised that it was about one of the staff members of Gay News. What the play was about was a gay couple and uh, their lives are challenged because into their lives comes uh, an attractive extra character. Um, now, let me see, uh, I've forgotten which, but one of the characters, and I forget which one out of the three of those, um, clearly, because he was described as um, an attractive American journalist working for a gay paper covering uh, films, was our film critic Jack Babuccio. And it's one of the most extraordinary things, it's happened to me twice in life, when you uh, see a play and you suddenly realise, oh my God, you're looking straight into uh, somebody else's private life. Kevin Elliott has always denied that it's about Jack Babuccio. But come on, Kevin. <clears throat> and as the staff photographer for Gay News, what was your relationship with the staff photographers from maybe the more mainstream press? That was a good question, because... Um, at the press photo calls for the, the theatre world, um, there were four or five other people, and um, I don't remember any, apart from the fellow putting his camera down and not photographing a gay thing on stage, he wasn't being anti-gay as regards me. Uh, I was welcome, I was perfectly welcome. It was a competitive business, but um, it, the flavour of the times was, I felt, 
gay liberation and uh, so uh, within the media I don't remember any problems like that. I had a purpose for I, for the photography. Um, uh, if you were to ask me why take photographs for gay news, is there a purpose to it? There was a very specific purpose or a very it was a p full of potential at that particular point. Um, photography is a thing of seeing things. It's a thing of light and uh, out of the shadows. And um, I did have a feeling that um, it, it was like sticking a fork into a compost heap. You know, uh, you've got a rich, hot, moist substance there, but when you show it to the light, all sorts of things grow, and um, uh, you can write down that you're a homosexual, or you can say it out loud, but somehow being photographed uh, as that uh, is you know, a really big, uh, important thing, and um, people would refuse. I remember again. I think it was in Bang Disco, as it happens, um, asking some a couple whether or not uh, they'd allow me to photograph them, and uh, one of them said, "Oh, I, I don't want my mother to find out." And I'm talking to a person who I reckon was in his late sixties or early seventies, and you think, "Well, heavens above, you know, what age is your mother?" And you know, don't leave it too late. But um, that business of being seen. We created a series of stories or things, one of the strands of work that I did to try and break down uh, the shyness or the awkwardness of buying gay news in a public place. It was for about three or four years. I had to provide every two weeks a photograph of somebody reading gay news in a public place. So we would go on a bus and a friend of mine would read gay news on the upper floor tube buying fish and chips uh, at a college in Oxford, by the seaside, um, gay news sticking out of a back pocket, uh, things like that. <coughs> Another sort of funny thing I remember once was this business of the covering social um, events. I decided that one of the social events of a gay person's, a gay man's life was cruising on beaches. So uh, I went down to um, Shell Bay and uh, spent five hours popping out over the dunes and asking people if they would mind being photographed for gay news and um, had a really good response. People thought it was very funny um, and uh, it worked very well. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome.